Well, good Wednesday morning. Welcome to another episode of Martin's Coin Pond. And of course it wouldn't be October without a bit of wind. So I apologise for whatever wind noise we may be experiencing. Now, it's like I said, Wednesday. Um, four days since I lost Tank. And I have a couple of other fish acting um, not normally in the pond. Um, you probably can't make her out because she's in the deepest part of the pond in the corner. Um, I'll try and point to her. There is Harriet the Harawaki. Now, Tuesday of last week, Harriet jumped out onto the slate path and had been bouncing around on the slate path for I don't know how long before my wife found her and we put her back in the pond. Now, Harriet is just staying in one place, um, hovering. She does move from time to time, like just then when the other fish bump into her and stuff. But then she goes back to hovering in that deep corner again. And I really don't know what's up with her. Um, I had a word with my koi dealer on Sunday when I popped in for some food. And he said the most likely exclamation explanation because she's not feeding at all is it could be something internal and if that is the case I've just got to sit on my hands and hope it repairs or if not I'm likely to lose her which is an absolute bummer because as you know she's pretty much my favourite fish in the pond um so, the next few days, well, obviously, I suppose it could take weeks if uh, she's not eating. I don't know how long a koi can go without eating. I mean, they can go all winter. But I'm just going to have to bear with and hope she recovers. Now, next to her at the minute in that corner is Bobby, my big um, kahaku. Um, he's my big one step um, red and white kahaku now Bobby is feeding but only on the odd occasion most of the time he doesn't feed and he is definitely covered in mucus there's, there's no the colour on his back is much lighter than it should be and uh, my plan is on Saturday is to get Bobby out and give him a scrape and see if he's got flukes because I found two f alive flukes on Tank the Dead a fish on Saturday um, not seen him uh, flick or anything like that but he's just right off his food he, he does eat like I said the odd pellet um, but he's also spending a lot of time in that corner with Harriet just sitting there like he is now. Now having said that, the rest of the fish are all pretty active and feeding reasonably well. So if we do have flukes in the pond, I think it's only a minor infestation, not a major one. Um, well, we do have flukes in the pond. I can't believe that the two on the dead fish were the only two flukes in the pond. Now I do have some fluke treatment in the in the, uh, in the garage, but I can't use it until ten days to two weeks after I dose the Alpha X. So Saturday is the earliest I can uh, treat for flukes, which is why I'm waiting until Saturday to scrape Bobby. So, anyway, I've rambled on enough. Um, probably.
probably the next update will be Saturday unless something major happens. Catch you then. Good Saturday morning. And as you see, I've got the microscope out. We've got some slides ready. My plastic scraping tool. And I'm going to have Bobby out now and give him a scrape and see what we find. Right, I've got a container ready with water in and not the best of nets but it's all I've got at the minute. I do need to invest in a proper koi net. Um, fish are all on the bottom. They've had some breakfast. Bobby didn't feed again. Um, he's pretty much there at the front of the pack. So let's see if we can get him out fairly quickly. That was surprisingly easy. Dog seems quite interested. Um, let's have a look at Bobby. If you can see, all his colour has faded and he's really mucousy there and there. Um, no sign of any bacterial um, issues like what Tank had. Um, he's always had that little white spot on his head. So, let's take a scrape and then, I hope the dog's drinking the, the water. Let's take a scrape and go and see what we can find and leave Bobby in the box just in case I need to take more scrapes. Well, that's confused the hell out of me because... I obtained a really good mucus scrape off Bobby and I have just been examining it for half an hour under quite a high magnification and I've found nothing. Nothing moving at all. Nothing that looks like um, anything dodgy. I mean there was lots of little um, colour cells I'd lifted off with the scrapes I'd perhaps pressed a bit hard um, but certainly no movement and surprisingly no flukes now bear in mind that dead fish had two flukes on it last Saturday I was at least expected to find a fluke or two so, I don't know what's going on. Catch you in a bit. Right, the other fish that uh, this fish hasn't ate for nearly a fortnight, a week and a half anyway. This is Harriet the Harawaki, the fish that jumped out. Um, found nothing on Bobby. So for a peace of mind, I'm going to scrape the second fish and decided to scrape this one. Um, let's see if we can find anything. Back to you in a bit. Well, welcome back. And of course, it's Saturday, so it's raining again. I've got a feeling this is the third Saturday running that... Uh, I've had to deal with rain. Great. Um, so I've had Harriet out now and Bobby and scraped them both. I've not put Harriet back yet. I need to put her back. And absolutely nothing. I did various magnification levels so I could check for the smaller things like Costia. Um, just nothing and uh, in a way that's encouraging but in a way it's confusing as to why Bobby is so mucousy and hardly eating and she's not eating at all having said that the rest of the fish are all eating pretty well and showing no ill signs whatsoever 
Um, I do have some antibacterial treatment and as Tank died from bacteria I think I might treat the pond with the antibacterial treatment. Um, just to be on the safe side in case that's what is attacking um, Bobby and the mucus is a response um, but certainly I can't find anything and I don't actually like the idea of treating for something I can't find and was most surprised not to find any flukes bearing in mind there were two flukes on the dead tank um, but I spent half an hour studying Bobby's uh, slide and a good 20 minutes on Harriet's so I can do no more so catch you in the next one well good Monday morning um, fish are doing okay Bobby's still looking a bit slimy and um, Harriet's still not feeding so I've decided to salt the pond which I know is a controversial subject but I'm only going to put in 0.2% of salt um, so just a tonic level so salt is on order should be here tomorrow in the meantime got some wood um, screws, some cable ties and we have the heron mat laid out ready and what I'm going to do is turn this into two frames so I can keep the autumn leaves off the pond and also give some protection should a heron decide to come flying over looking for some uh, easy pickings in the winter so I am going to cover my pond for the winter, but only with a net. I'm feeding the fish currently three times a day, but only a very small feed. And I'm off work this week, so hence I'm cracking on with this job. Of course Milo the puppy is out here with me, and he's probably going to be more of a hindrance, as you can see, than a help. But I'll cope. Back to you in a bit. Right, a little bit of a shaky start there. I've done the first frame, covering half the pond, roughly. The next frame will go just short of the shower and around the um, box filter, so it might take me a little longer to construct especially as that thing is being an absolute pain in the neck and the wife's off shopping so I'm stuck with it leave that oh, here we go again well good Monday afternoon still and as you can see I've finished um, had to put some corner supports in just to stop the wood bowing too much but we've got a pretty pretty good all round um, seal there's a, a couple of gaps over here not a lot I can do about that um, what I can do though is feed I do my water changes through those gaps um, I don't know how long I'll keep the skimmer on. I am considering that once we start getting frosts, turning the skimmer off, stripping down the box filter, and giving it a good clean, ready for next uh, spring. But we'll see on that. Um, but now, these covers are staying on. So unless there's a, a fish emergency, this is how the pond's going to look for the next few months. Anyway, 
think that now I was going to say that wraps it up but I've got the salt coming tomorrow so it won't wrap it up um, catch you tomorrow well good Tuesday afternoon and you found me about to add some salt to the pond so the pond salt I bought is this uh, stuff here made by British salt or something and got a bucket of pond water just measured out two kilos of salt now my pond's 9,000 litres give or take a few litres um, so 18 kilos of salt is um, 0.2% salt solution um, so that's what I'm going to add. I do have a accurate refractometer, um, which I could use to test once I've added it all. But I think I'm going to add it two kilos at a time, so as not to shock the fish too much. So I'm going to get the first couple of kilos dissolved, and then in the pond. So. That's uh, pretty much wraps it up for this week, and I'll see you in the next video.